Capitola City Council. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes, Councilmember Bertrand. Aye. Councilmember Botorv. Ed, you there? Here. There he is. Okay. Councilmember Story. Here. Vice Mayor Brooks. Here. Mayor Peterson. Here. Uh, please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll start with my monologue here. In accordance with the current shelter-in-place order from Santa Cruz County Health Service and Executive Order N2920, from the Executive Department of the State of California, this council meeting is not physically open to the public. Limited staff are present in the council chambers and council is participating remotely via video call. Members of council can use their reaction choices in Zoom to indicate that they would like to speak, similar to raising a hand. Um, you can also raise your hand uh, in the participants bar on the button that says, raise hand. As always, this meeting is Cablecast Live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. and on Saturday following the first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed live from the city's website and with the Zoom meeting link also available on our website. Our technician tonight is Benjamin Thompson. Benjamin, thank you as, also, uh, as always. rather. Despite being physically closed to the public, participation is still possible. Public comment can be emailed or called in to council. To call in comments, before the item you wish to comment on, call the phone number now displayed. Enter meeting ID 821-0902-6541. Press the hash or pound key when prompted for a participant ID. To raise your hand and make a comment, press star six on your phone, wait to hear that you are unmuted, and then make your comment. You will have up to three minutes to speak. If you are watching the meeting via Zoom, you can use the participant option to raise your hand and make a comment when unmuted by our moderator. To email comments, identify the item you wish to comment on in your email subject line. Emailed comments will be accepted starting now up until I announce that public item, excuse me, public comment for an item is closed. Each emailed comment will be read aloud for up to three minutes or displayed on a screen. Emails and calls received outside of the comment period outlined will not be included in the record. Moving on to item two, do we have any additional materials for tonight's meeting? Yes, there were four emails sent in favor of the beach grading and the closure of the lagoon. Are there any additions or deletions to tonight's agenda? Staff has no changes. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go on to city council and staff comments. Does staff have any comments tonight? No. All right, we're going to move on to city council comments. If there's any member of the council that has any comments, please feel free to use your reaction or raise hand button. I see that Vice Mayor Brooks has her hand raised, so we'll go to you. Hi, thank you, Mayor Peterson. Um, I just wanted to, um, I'm not sure if anyone has been able to visit the village today, but clearly we're seeing many people not obeying our county health officer's public order regarding the beach closures. And it worries me that there are mixed messages being sent to the community regarding the reopening of Capitola and its businesses and restaurants in conjunction with our beaches still being closed. And it seems impossible for our PD, PD to manage. So I ask that staff contact our county um, health officer to update her on the issues we're facing here locally and report back at the next meeting um, with her response. Um, and also, I just wanted to take a moment to address that, um, that there are some catastrophic happenings taking place in America right now. And I just don't want to take another day to state uh, publicly or to wait to state publicly that black lives do matter. As a leader in our community, I feel it is necessary to use my voice to express my support and sympathy of the many lives that have been lost. As a community, we must practice anti-racism in order to shift the paradigm. 
Our county and local police officers have done an exceptional job and have participated in, in implicit bias trainings and other trainings. But, um, however, racism is, is real and it exists everywhere, even in Capitola. So, therefore, we must take actions to be part of the solution. I will continue to exercise my privilege as an elected official to speak fearlessly, with, um, fearlessly and with cause. And I will continue to remind our community of my message at every meeting from here on out until the riots have ended. When I look back on this, I want to be proud of the history and changes that were made, and I want to be part of the solution, and I hope our community has too. So thank you for giving me the time today and the City of Capitola for this opportunity. Thank you, Vice Mayor Brooks. That was very well said, and I will join you in the commitment to speaking out at every meeting from here uh, forward to make sure that action uh, is, is taken to make a better world. Uh, and on that note, I wanted to just take a, a quick moment in my comments, uh, if anyone is interested in uh, learning a little bit more about how we can commit to not only being uh, uh, better citizens, but to being anti-racist in our actions and our lives, is this is the book that I am currently reading, How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kennedy, and I highly recommend it. One of the things that I'm learning from it is there is no such thing as not racist. It is either racist or it is blatantly anti-racist, and that's what I'm committing to trying to strive for in my life as we move forward as an individual and as an elected leader. So thank you very much, Vice Mayor Brooks, for bringing that uh, forward tonight. Uh, any additional comments from Council? Seeing none, we'll move forward uh, to general government and public hearing. Uh, the one item on our agenda tonight, hearing on the implementation of the Soquel Creek Management Plan. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm going to share my screen here. I have a short presentation. There we go. Thank you, Council, for coming together tonight to uh, hear this item regarding the Soquel Creek Management Plan and it's uh, whether we're going to implement it uh, this summer or not. Um, just to give us a little background on why we're, why we're here tonight. Um, as the city moves forward and is preparing the budget for the next fiscal year, which starts in July 1st, uh, the city was facing a $4.5 million deficit in funding. This is uh, pretty historical and not something that we've ever gone through before. In addition, the local health orders require Capitola Beach to be closed from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. So due to these impacts and the beach restrictions, the financial impacts and the beach restrictions caused by COVID-19, the Soquel Creek Management Plan, which involves the beach grading and lagoon closure, has not been completed to date. To address the funding deficit, the draft budget, which is currently being considered by the City Council, cut all discretionary funding, um, such as the Lagoon Management Plan. We have a hiring freeze on all vacant positions, and all bargaining groups of employees are making concessions. In the Public Works Department, some of the items that we have significantly reduced or defunded have included the Summer Beach Shuttle, which is now unfunded for 2020. Private litter removal contracts, which we usually have during the summer, have been unfunded. Janitorial services, which help keep the bathrooms both at Esplanade Park and on the wharf and at City Hall clean during the weekends especially, have been severely reduced. And, and the reason we're here is the Soquel Creek Management Plan itself has been unfunded. Tonight's special meeting has been called to discuss whether to allocate personnel and funding resources to implement the management plan at this time. So quick little reasons for the management plan. The work permitted through the SoCal Management Plan was first adopted in 1990 and was required by several federal and state agencies to allow the city to close the lagoon. The city had been closing lagoons, I think, since the 30s, 40s, something along those lines. And for, for the first 50 years that they've been doing it, they did what they wanted and weren't really, and it was before there was a lot of the resource agencies in place. Um, in 1989, I think it was, the Fish and Wildlife and other resource agencies came, con came concerned with our practices, and so we adopted the management plan, which they have also adopted, and have continued to close the lagoon um, since 1990 under that plan. Public Works typically completes the closure and grading work prior to Memorial Day, although 
there certainly have been two times in, in my history with the city and many before that uh, where it has occurred after Labor Day. Main, the main reason for that is for late season rains uh, delayed the closure. Under the permits that we have from several agencies is monitoring is required. Um, from the time we start working on the closure until the time we open it up when it starts raining in the fall. And, you know, I'm not, the monitor isn't just something that these agencies came up with. It is necessary work because we're dealing with, we're, we're impacting a native, native habitat that has protected species in it. And by monitoring it, we can make sure the work that we do, as opposed to letting nature do what it might usually do, doesn't ne neg negatively impact these resources. I'm going to get into that a little bit more in a minute. So if authorized to complete the grading tonight, um, we want to try and complete it before the Junior Guards program starts on June 15th. So um, at this point, if we receive authority to move forward, we will be starting work next Monday and hope to have it done by Friday. Um, just a little more on the implementation plan. So it encloses the lagoon, builds the levee around the lagoon, puts all the water coming down the creek, then goes out the flume, and it creates our summer beach. It fills in the low channel along the Esplanade seawall that you see today, and that, that riverbed is frequently could become fouled with stagnant water and possibly produce odors. Ecologically, the creation of the habitat for the steelhead, it creates a, an enhanced habitat. Um, it uh, creates a freshwater habitat, uh, and, and that's very good for the young steelhead. It re doesn't require them to swim upstream is the biggest beneficiary. Um, Using the monitoring from the fisheries biologists, we are able to monitor the creek, and he advises the public work staff on potential issues that impact the habitat. Uh, we can manipulate the, the height of the water in the flume and where the water draws from, which helps us resolve such things as salinity, temperature, oxygen levels, and clarity. So these are things that get monitored regularly during while the closure is in place, and we are continually moving up and down boards on the flume and adjusting it depending on what those monitoring results are. Uh, from a recreational standpoint, the closure of the lagoon does raise the lagoon in the, the water level on the lagoon and the upstream creek a little bit, which facilitates paddle boarding and kayaking. Quick word about enforcement. As Council Vice Mayor Brooks indicated, COVID-19 has created several self-safety self orders, such as closing the beach and social distancing that are proving very staff intensive to enforce. Closing the creek and grading the beach will likely marginally increase these challenges. I mean, we're, we're creating attractions which are counterintuitive to the health orders that are in place. With or without the closure, the following remains in effect until the county health officer changes them. The beaches will still remain closed from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. whether we grade it or not. Shelter in place order remains in place, and so do the social distancing directives. So looking at the finances of moving forward with the management plan. So the management plan spans two fiscal years. We start work in May, or in June in this case, if we move forward, which is in the fiscal year that's ending at the end of this month. And then it continues until the fall when we open it. So when we funded the management plan in the 2019-20 budget, which is our current year budget, we included funding that was to be used right now uh, in May for the closure and for the monitoring to start. So that's current fund balance of available funding in the current budget is $19,600. Um, to move forward today to close the beach at this time, we need to rent equipment for $15,000 and the monitoring is um, estimated to cost just for this summer, not for next year, for $21,600. I'd like to commend our fisheries biologist, Don Alley, who's gone through and we've pared down this because of the financial problems to by 47% of our usual cost. This is a one-time reduction. So all of the monitoring is required in our permits. It's not something that uh, we do just because we like it. Um, we have talked to several of the agencies and told them of our intent to reduce the monitoring and they've indicated uh, their willingness to cooperate with that. So I think we will move forward with the crew. If we do move forward tonight, we will be sending the monitoring plan contained in the agenda to all the agencies and we anticipate their, their acceptance of that. So if we look at the cost 
to do move, move forward today, we need $36,600. We have $19,600, so we need $17,000 allocated tonight to move forward with a closure. Looking forward to May of next fiscal year, a year from now, or 11 months from now, um, I estimate we'll need $26,000. I realize that's a little more than the 19000 that we have left over at this time. The uh, fund balance this year is actually a little artificially low because our opening was delayed. It was not until, I think, the very end of November that we did the opening. That's about a month longer <clears throat> excuse me, than it is in a typical year. It's usually in October. We are at the end of October. Every week that we're closing is more monitoring we need to do. So these are not fixed costs. So that's why um, I've estimated that $42,000 total, $43,000 total for doing the the plan is pretty typical given that we have a reduced monitoring for part of it. I think my intended goal for budgeting for this year um, before the COVID-19 pandemic was uh, $55,000. So looking at the budget, if the budget, if implementation is approved, amendments to the proposed 2021 fiscal budget, which is still being reviewed by the council, will need to be implemented to fund the work after July 1st. As we already said, 19000 is existing, $43,000 to fund the entire fiscal year, $17,000 to move forward just right now. If the council directs implementation, you may fund just the 2020 cost at this time, and then when we do a budget review, uh, either mid-year or quarterly, prior to the close of this budget, we can add the 2021 cost at that time. Some of the funding options uh, available to put money toward this project is to transfer from CIP projects. And in the budget report, we listed Capitol Avenue because it had a rather healthy fund balance at this time, the sidewalk project there. But it's also come to, uh, I realized that we have some funds left over in the Park Avenue sidewalk project, which recently is, I would say, 99.5% complete. We're just waiting for some signs to get set up. And I do believe we'll have a fund balance there of about $54,000. Uh, another option is to do a fund, a loan fund from the contingency of emergency refunds reserves, which are um, because the funding is down, our percentages are down, so there are some available money there. But as the funding returns, we would need to replace those funds in the future budget. So our recommendation tonight is to provide direction on implementation of the SoCal Creek Management Plan for the 2020 summer involves the lagoon gate, lagoon closure and beach grading. And if the work is directed to proceed, provide direction to the finance staff on the amendments to the proposed 2021 budget. That is my report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much. Let me pull up the participants tab so I can see if any of our council members have any questions. And it looks like a council member story, and then we'll come to council member Bertrand. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Steve, and, uh, and also you, Jimmy, I guess my principal concern is about enforcement um, if we were to grade the beach. Um, and so my question goes to the current order, uh, the public health order to have the beach closed from 11 to 5. Um, do you have any indication of how much longer uh, the health officer is going to uh, impose that order on us. Um, and, and if not, is there some indication that that may be lifted by July the 1st? And, and I think my last question, and this maybe this goes to the chief, is how much more difficult is it going to be for us to be able to enforce the closure of the beach if we groom it uh, and close the lagoon? Thank you. Councilmember Story, I'll take a crack at the first part of this, and then I think uh, Chief McManus can answer the second part. So the, the health officer um, has been asked, I've been on a number of calls where the health officer has been asked this express question of how long the beach rules are going to remain in effect. And at this point, the only thing she has told us <clears throat> is that she anticipates that they will last through the summer. I don't know, I don't know. So I don't know beyond that. That's what she's, uh, the information she's given to us. So um, I do know, well, I'll let the enforcement question. I think the Chief McManus can probably talk to the enforcement challenges and then also your question that you, uh, that you raised. Terry. Thank you. 
evening, Mayor Peterson, council members. I'm hoping you can, number one, hear me and that my video is on the screen. I can't see from my end. <clears throat> Thank you for the question, uh, council member Story. Um, and just as uh, Vice Mayor Brooks mentioned, um, there's a significant number of violations daily. Those violations are increasing, which means it's becoming increasingly more difficult with our limited PD resources to properly manage the violations. Um, we're making efforts on an hourly basis to get down there. And as is often the case, when we're down there and when we're present, uh, people choose to leave. Some people receive citations, others receive warnings. But just as soon as that presence is gone, uh, then the violations continue. And so uh, that's not news. I think everyone is well aware of those challenges. As Steve mentioned, with the creation of the lagoon um, and the increase in the size of the beach, there's also um, a related increase in the attraction to capital, as we all understand, uh, which is going to increase the need for uh, police resources uh, or additional presence as best we can down there in the village. Um, the benefit, however, is that we can more easily access the sand when the creek is no longer running through uh, the middle of the beach. Currently, as you might imagine, the officers have to access the largest portion of the beach from the work area, uh, do some enforcement or, or uh, some proactive patrol uh, over there, and then they have to exit the beach, walk around through the missions into the village and access the smaller portion of the beach from the opposite side. And so certainly that creek creates presents some challenges. The other thing that I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this is uh, we're, we're talking about the village, which is a high priority area, but there are also, in my opinion, high priority areas throughout the city in need of police presence and police resources. Not, not to mention resources that might continue to be needed to support uh, others in the county uh, with regard to protests and potential riots. Uh, absent that, resources needed for, now that we're transitioning to a higher level of stage two in the state's um, uh, roadmap to resiliency and the opening of retail outlets, there's more presence required at the mall property. Uh, there's continued presence required up in the 41st Avenue quarter. Uh, and then this time of year, as is always the case, more calls for service, more demands for police services as it relates to some of the traffic, ongoing traffic violations and speed concerns throughout the city. So that's a difficulty, and in a long way, I mentioned the question comes on the story, that's a difficulty in managing the PD resources as it relates to going forward. I'll end with this, however. We understand what our role is, and we're committed to providing those resources as best we can, given the current challenges, uh, and some of them have been discussed with regard to the public health officer's position currently, on the restricted access to the beach from 11 to 5 and whether or not uh, there will be an adjustment to those restrictions in the near future. Uh, I have no more uh, information on that piece of it than has already been presented by the city manager. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you, Chief. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Jamie, also for that, uh, of those answers. That's helpful. All right, Council Member Bertrand, you also had your hand up at one point. Do you still have a question? No, I lowered it. Um, the question's got answered, so thank you. Okay, thank you. Vice Mayor Brooks, do you have your hand up? Yes, I do. Um, my question is, is this, some of the emails we received address safety for the Junior Guard Program. Um, and maybe our city manager can um, answer this. Is there, if we do not do this, is there really a, um, will there be a safety issue for our, for our kiddos who are out there? I think Steve is prepared to address this one. Steve, do you have a, any feedback? Yes, yeah, so, Vice Mayor Bricks. The, the primary reason we, we do the management plan is to uh, fill in the creek and create the lagoon. Safety is an adjunct of, of it. Um, we do sift the, band, sift the sand. Um, we were planning to sift the sand and, and clean the sand without the closure. Um, I, I, I don't think safety is a primary reason for doing this, and, and I still think it would be a safe beach without doing the closure. And then my follow-up question is, um, <clears throat> There was mention of smells. If we do not close the lagoon, that many businesses who who are on the Esplanade were worried that there would be smells. 
regarding the the odors, so odors are created when kelp is uh, along the bottom of the lagoon or bottom of the of the creek channel going out right now, um, and the water dries up or the water is so shallow that the sun bakes the kelp and it starts uh, to rot. It will release odors. Um, we get that even with the lagoon sometimes. I think the Chances of it occurring are higher if we do not close the lagoon than if we do close the lagoon, um, but in either case, they possible under both circumstances. Okay, thank you. And I just have one last question. You mentioned the there was money from the Park Avenue project. Did you say there was there was fifty four thousand dollars available in that project or left over from that project? And um, and whatever that number is, the the follow up to that question is. What were the intentions? What were your intentions of using the, that money for next year? So I do not have the absolute final costs yet. Um, my estimate at this time is we're uh, going to use some of the contingency funds, but yes, we will have a fund balance very close to fifty-four thousand dollars. Typically, when a project uh, has money left over when it is completed, we either allocate it to another capital improvement project or return it to the general fund, and that would be the direction of the city council to make that decision. Thank you. Those are all of my questions. Great. Thank you. Steve, just to clarify, um, do, do I understand correctly that even if we don't close the lagoon, we are, we are going to be grading the beach, sifting the sand? Yes, that is true. We will be removing kelp and sifting the sand on the what I call the peninsula between, you know, that extends from the end of the flume toward the uh, jetty at this point. We were going to be cleaning that as best we can, but be aware that that is still in a tidal influenced area. So we may remove the kelp at six in the morning and at eight in the afternoon or eight that morning, the kelp may be washed up again. So, sure. um, but we're going to try. Great. And do I also uh, understand if, if I'm reading it correctly that even if we agree to close the lagoon tonight, it couldn't happen until after July 1st? Is that my understanding? No. Our intent is if we get direction to close the lagoon, we will start next Monday and be done by next Friday. Okay. There was there was something on one of the slides about funds the work after. Oh, was that for, for next part? Yes. That was the funding for the, the continuation of the work that needs to start on July 1st. That makes sense. Okay. Great. Thank you for clarifying that for me. I appreciate it. Are there any additional questions from council members before we go to our public comment? Seeing none, I'm going to turn it over to our moderator, Larry, uh, to uh, call upon any of our um, uh, attendees here on our on our Zoom meeting or via phone call. Uh, if you have a comment, a public comment, now is the time. Uh, please either use the raise hand feature or if you are on a phone, uh, dial star six to unmute yourself, and I will leave it to you, Larry, to go ahead and call on those that are wishing to speak on this item. Okay, Mayor Peterson, I see one person right now with the dial-in number, and I will uh, allow them to talk. Is someone is someone keeping uh, time, Larry? Uh. <laughs> yes, we are here. Th th thank you. Oh. Great, thank you. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Um, I'm a Capitol resident. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, yes. great. Um, I'd like to see an alternative other than um, focusing on recreation, something that upholds the responsibility of the management plan um, in regards to protecting the species mentioned in that plan. Um, I just think anything else that supports recreation in any way is in conflict, as you guys have said, with the shelter in place order, in conflict to what enforcement has been saying is already a problem. Um, and just in general, it you know the intent of beaches and recreation. Right now, our shelter in place is closing it off to the public, and I'm concerned about the message that we are giving by saying, "Well, it's closed to recreation, but for this special group, it's going to be open." Um, you know, we have kids in places without backyards that can't go to the beach at all right now. So I'm just concerned on the world stage what that looks like for our small and and wonderful town. Might I? Add. So I just wanted to put that out there um, as things to consider with everything going on in the world um, today. And would hope to see a special meeting perhaps focused on, you know, what we are doing with policing and the culture of policing for our own community. And just a side note, your guys' meeting ID is wrong online. It's 
um, a little different, so it might be their only reason if I'm the only person called in. Thank you. We'll definitely have to look into that. Thank you for your comments. Are there any additional public comments on this item from anyone on the call or on the Zoom meeting? So, Steve, I think you need to stop sharing your screen and then I can check the email unless there's another no, call. I, you got it. Great. I, oh, wait. I have, so I have another uh, uh, dial-in person. Okay. Let's go with that. Thank you, Larry. Julie Kenny. You need to unmute. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, my husband, I sent a couple of emails as well, but my husband and I own um, a duplex in the village, and we have owned it for almost nine years. And um, just the presence of being in the village and it being un unkept, unsafe, uh, even during the, the non-11 to 5 hours just for locals and people who have homes there um, you can't even safely walk from one side of the pier to the to the beach um, and it's it's just we we bought in um, Capitola because of the charm the businesses and just feel like when we're there with our kids just to be able to not to and enjoy the beach or even walk on it safely it's a it's a big it's a big concern so um even with the the kelp you know cleaning it up um if you keep the lagoon open um and spending all that money and not having it insured that it's not going to be there a few hours later and i also think that if it's going to be open for one group like the junior guards um uh, which I'm happy it is, but um, what about other people who want to just enjoy the beach or play football or, or whatnot and all those locals? And then also, um, I was very happy that you guys are opening up for the outside dining. I think that's going to help the businesses a lot. But it is very interesting to me that diners can be sitting in a small parking lot area enjoying dinner but then there's a big beautiful beach that um, cannot be used right now that's full of kelp and lagoon and even looking at it um, for the businesses like Zelda the Margaritaville it's just not as pleasant as it used to be and I'm actually very very happy that the budget was also um, brought down by 47 percent because even 80000 with what we all pay in taxes and the TOTs and all of that and what the businesses pay for rent, I think it's the least you can do um, to help try to bring some um, pride and beauty to, to the village during this, um, during this time, especially everything that's happened in the last couple of weeks. We, we need to see the beach. We need to see its beauty and being reminded of why we should all want to visit Capitola in the future as well. That's all. Thank you for your comments, Julie. Appreciate it. Do you have any additional comments, uh, Larry? At this time, I do not see any other hand raised. Great. Thank you. Uh, with that, we will go to our email comments. Uh, City Manager, do we have any uh, comments via email that have come in since we uh, started discussion on this item? Yes, we do. So I will share the screen and we can start at the beginning. Can you guys see my screen at this time? We can. Hey, um, Jamie, I, I wonder if you can give us some guidance here. I know that um, in uh, public comments in person, each person gets one three-minute comment. It looks like we have uh, four or five from one individual and two from another individual. Can you clarify how we're going to address this tonight? Well, my recommendation would be to treat it just like we treat oral communications in general, and then we take one from each person. Um, 
as a result, maybe what we will do here is, is it looks like you're correct that we have one, two, three. It looks like there's, yeah, we'll, we'll give this person a chance to send us one, one, their final comment. Otherwise, we'll just take it from the top. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay, so here's the first comment, and I will read aloud. Good evening. My family and I reside on Riverview Drive along the Soquel Creek. We were made aware that the city is considering not closing the lagoon this summer, as they have for many years. This decision to not proceed with the management plan has many negative impacts for local businesses, wildlife and residents. We feel that since this work was already budgeted for the Fight 19 to 20 budget, this work should proceed. I've spoken to many of our beloved neighbors and business owners, and every one of them are in favor of keeping the management plan. We appreciate you meeting to consider this item and we hope you make the decision to move forward. Thank you. The Kushirai family. Okay, that's the first comment. And then it looks as if we have, the rest of the comments are just received up here. So it sounds like somebody's suggesting um, that the, the, here we'll read it as a comment Hello. and maybe we can correct it. For your forward. information, your meeting ID for your special meeting going on now is wrong. The ID is 8216450-0793. The public cannot enter with the ID provided on the site. I only figured it out because the right ID shows in the link you provide. Okay, so then we've received... Um, Oh, it looks like B and J Kenny said that they already read, already said the comments. So I guess we will go with Sylvia Winsby, and let's take just the first one they sent. Does that seem like the right approach, Madam Mayor? Okay. I, I think that makes sense. Yeah. It, it, uh, is the rest of this going to be included in record or um, as a, as additional materials when we do the minutes or? Yeah, we can include it as additional materials. Okay, thank you, I appreciate it. Well, actually, I think that there might be a challenge there because if you don't actually see it, I don't think that suggesting that it was part of the record when nobody actually saw it before voting, I don't know that that would be very um, appropriate. So I think we would only That's want to include point. the ones that were actually entered into the record. Okay, let's just enter into the records the ones that we read then and maybe in future uh, agendas or, or as we open future public comment, we'll make sure to, uh, to notify the public that only they'll, they'll only have uh, the opportunity for one of their emails to be read, uh, similar to if they were in public. Okay. Uh, at a public meeting. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we will start with this first comment received from Sylvia Winsby. Dear Mayor and City Council members, Thank you for the opportunity to publicly comment on the issue of lagoon creation to expand the beach. I am a 20-year resident of Capitola, and each year when the creek dam is put in to create the lagoon, I've been sorry to see the water become completely stagnant. Each year, the lagoon becomes increasingly polluted and ugly, in my opinion, and several years the public has not been allowed to enter the lagoon area due to contamination. I was not aware that part of the Rashine Vale is to create the steelhead salmon growth area in the creek. I'm not sure how that translates to the steelhead population, but the water is so dark during summer season that one cannot see the bottom of the creek. Furthermore, it would seem that locally we have many waterways which naturally foster the salmon growth, e.g. San Lorenzo River, Salinas River, and Apis Creek. Last Saturday, May 30th, walking upstream a bit from downtown. I saw a kingfisher flying over at a creek, and watched it catch the small fish. I also was able to view ducklings, an increased mallard duck population, and a young blue heron. If you'd been near the creek this spring, you would notice that the water is running clear. One can see to the bottom of the creek bed, and the surrounding creek environment is thriving and beautiful. Please consider allowing the creek a year to recover and regain its natural species of wildlife understanding that tourism is a major economic factor for our community, I see that having an uninterrupted stretch of beach is inviting to tourists. However, that's not what we need this year with the COVID-19 pandemic. We need to protect our population's health and maintain the beach closure from 11 to 5 daily to curb the overcrowding that would likely ensue from a beach looking as usual. 
I thank the police department for the great job they have done in patrolling and enforcing the health department's stipulations. After 5 p.m., I've noticed many families enjoying the creek that is flowing down the beach. It provides a great place for children to play. In 20 years, I haven't been able to witness how low the creek bead becomes through summer, nor is there is any odor problem as mentioned in your agenda today. Have any of you witnessed this? Personally, the ugliness of the stagnant lagoon area, filled with bird feces by August each year is repulsive, even if it doesn't smell because you're putting chemicals in it. I encourage you to consider seeing if the high tides on the beach could do a better job this summer. Financially, I think the sidewalk project is more important this year than the man-made sculpting of the beach and damming of Sotel Creek. Our public residence health is more important than a possibly more inviting beach a matter of personal taste in my opinion and the environmental health of the Sotel Creek area could thrive in a way many of us have never been able to witness or enjoy. Thank you for your time and consideration. Sylvia wins the e Okay, so that, I believe, takes care of the comments. All right. Thank you for those comments. That was pretty impressive, Sylvia. You got an email into almost the, exactly the three-minute comment period. Very nice. All right. Um, so with that, we are going to close public comment on this item and bring it back to uh, Council for a discussion and a vote. Um, if, if I could start just briefly, I have a couple questions based on um, the staff report, but also based on some of the comments we just heard. Um, so I'll try to make them very, very brief. Um, one of the comments was about um, allowing the junior guards on the beach as opposed to allowing others on the beach. My understanding is that junior guards will take place prior to the 11 a.m. beach closure. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, for beach grading, if we were to, do we, um, uh, own the equipment that we use to grade the beach or do we have to rent that every time we use it? So I, I guess the reason for that question is if we grade the beach and all the seaweed comes back onto the sand, can we just do it again the following week or do we have to get rent equipment to do that every time? Uh, there's two, two points to this answer. First of all, when we do the lagoon formation and the big grading of the beach when we close the lateral channel, we do need to rent a bulldozer for that work. The daily cleaning of removing the kelp is something we do with our own equipment. Oh, okay. So even if, if we removed the kelp, um, made it a little bit easier for the junior guards to get around on the beach and it came back, we'd be able to do that again? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then the final one is if, if we choose today not to close up the creek, uh, do we have the opportunity, should this become an issue with the smell, do we have the opportunity to revisit this in the future? There's always a chance to, to revisit it. Um, I will add, though, that the ability to flush out the, the kelp that's rotting goes down as the flows in the creek go down. So, um, and the diminished daily right now, we're at about, last time I looked, around 16 cubic feet per second of flow, which is probably enough to flush it. By July, certainly by August, we'll down, be down to one to two CFS, and most likely well, we'll be able to bury some of it um, a lot of the kelp will still remain at that time. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you, uh, Council, for allowing me to jump in there quickly. So let's uh, go back to our Council members uh, for discussion and a vote. So please feel free to raise your hand if you have any additional comments on this item. I'm sorry, I'm just going to jump in uh, before the discussion. And I just one other point that somebody s suggested in public comment that we put chemicals in the lagoon, and the city does not put chemicals in the lagoon. We, we, we're not allowed to do that. That's certainly not something the city has done, I think, in, in 30 plus years. Good to know. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Bottorf has his hand up. Thank you, Mayor. A uh, couple things on this issue. I, uh, I think this is a great idea to close, uh, close and make and form a lagoon. Uh, my concerns about that specifically deal with the, uh, the wildlife, the fish, and, 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 and making sure that we don't do anything to, uh, to cause that uh, imbalance. Uh, the second reason is uh, I'm tremendously concerned about the smell. It would look very bad on us to get back on our feet, open our village, and then have the kelp do its smell thing like it does in August. The problem with that is that, as Steve just mentioned with the flow, 
if we get there in August and we have the flow, the smell, we don't have the flow and the ability to flush it out adequately to make that problem properly go away. This is kind of a one-shot deal. Either we do it or we don't, and we bear the burden of that. And, and that is to me, even though I realize we are almost $4 million in debt, I'm willing to spend $40,000 to make sure the lagoon doesn't hamper our recovery path. With regards to the grading, while the tractor's out there and we paid the money to do the lagoon, it, it's not a big deal to grade the beach. And I don't necessarily believe that, I mean, that's important that it makes it more attractive. But my concern is, I don't want a safety problem out there. I think it's great that Mickey and Recreation were willing to try to put on the junior guards. Pretty much she was going to make uh, lemonade out of lemons and use what she had. But it will be a better program if it's graded. Uh, and the other thing I believe is, is that they want to be graded and make it a continuous beach instead of the hazard zone that it is now. I believe uh, we may find ourselves getting, we may rent some kind of uh, quad vehicle that we could get for our police department which would maximize manpower and we could get out there to the beach in a way that it would not be the burdensome problem that they're having now. Sir, has made the determination for Santa Cruz not to open the beach. They've already not hired the life guards. They're pretty much all in on that. I don't expect the beach to open. If it were to open, that would be great. I know it's not about closing, it's whatever the county health official uh, allows. But if we do grade it and it does open, we're not in a bad situation. So uh, even though I hate spending money that we absolutely don't have, and I need the public to understand that we don't have money, but I consider this a necessity. Thank you, Council Member Botwer. Uh, I know that Council Member Bertrand had his hand up. Uh, do you still have a comment, Council Member Bertrand? Sure. Um, addressing Ed's last comment there, I think from the business's standpoint, um, this is a necessity. Um, the issue for them is they're trying to recover from being closed for so long, and if residents, um, excuse me, and visitors don't come here because they don't see uh, a beach that's attractive, which is very much a part of their experience, it's going to be much harder for our businesses. So I support this proposal. Thank you, Council Member Bertrand. Council Member Story? I'm sorry, you're muted, Council Member Story. How's that? Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, well, I, uh, to start over, um, I wanted to uh, thank everyone who gave input uh, today. Um, and really, I mean, it shows that people care about uh, our creek, the lagoon, and the beach. Um, and I just want to, you know, recognize that Capitola has been closing the lagoon uh, for decades, um, and it's been done for both environmental reasons um, uh, and, and in addition for the benefit of the steelhead, the habitat, um, and for the tourists on the beach. Um, and, um, you know, and I, I think the only downside or the, what we're trying to grapple with this year is how do we weigh and balance um, the public health orders and the closure of the beach from 11 to 5 um, and, um, and at the same time, make the beach very nice and inviting. Um, uh, but for me, I think making more space on the beach is a benefit social distancing. And to me, that's part of the safety uh, for the public, of having more space for people to be able to exercise and be able to do that at a distance. Now, and since we've already approved the junior guards to be there, and there will be, um, if, you know, hundreds of them at any given time, I think that, and, and in addition to uh, the other residents and the visitors who will be there, because we have to remember the beach is over, open to any kind of exercise uh, for anyone up until 11 a.m. 
And I think that that's an overriding concern for me, that we need to make room for people to be able to use it um, and to be able to socially distance from one another while they're doing that. Um, we already have some um, difficulties with people violating the order that may get marginally more difficult. Um, um, but I have confidence uh, in our uh, police department that they will be able to uh, manage that the best they can, um, you know, in the relationship to all their other duties um, and do that in a professional um, and an appropriate manner. Um, and, uh, um, and I also anticipate that at some point during the summer, my sense is that the uh, public, the health um, officer is going to release the restrictions on the beach altogether. Um, and I think that we need to be looking forward and anticipate and planning that. Um, I know that the city manager mentioned that there's a possibility that it may be closed for the uh, entire summer. Um, and I, I hope that that's not, the, that's not the case. And I don't believe that will be the case. Um, because, you know, we, we need to be able to, uh, I think, uh, balance this uh, disparity between having uh, outside dining with people sitting close together and, and which is going to uh, bring in um, more visitors uh, to the village, to the beach. We need to provide a safe place for them to be able to um, congregate um, and um, uh, and be able to have a, a safe distance from one another. Concerning the financial impact, I think I'm, I'm, um, it seems that the staff has come up with a, a good solution for managing that. Um, you know, it will um, reduce our current year fund balance by, um, you know, 19600 I think that um, we will still end up with a, about $154,000 fund balance going forward, even after that. Um, and in, for funding it for next year, um, with our contingency being um, overfunded, um, I believe that we could take that, uh, the uh, 43,000 uh, that is necessary. Um, 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 with the additional 70 and then the 26 from the contingency fund. Um, um, and then in future budget years, we can address uh, refilling that if need be. I wouldn't necessarily want to take it out of uh, the capital uh, projects at this time. Uh, the Park Avenue project, it's not completed yet. We don't know exactly you know, what may be there. Um, and there may be other uh, capital projects that may come for us at that time. And so I also think that we should plan uh, on in next year's budget, put it in next year's budget uh, to be able to uh, continue with the uh, lagoon management plan um, at that time as well. Um, so with all that, um, um, I'm, I'm supported of proceeding this year um, with the management program um, and, um, and, you know, and, and uh, hopefully uh, we can be able to uh, not only manage the beach, but also manage, uh, you know, the public health orders that are, that, are, um, that you know, are connected to it. So um, those are my comments and um, and I'll support, and maybe I, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we um, approve um, the implementation of the self Creek and Lagoon Management Plan um, for you know the summer of, of 2020 that we budgeted for also in the 2021 fiscal year um, and that we um, take the necessary funding uh, from the um, contingency reserve that's uh, overfunded at this time. I'll second that. And Madam Mayor, I have a question also. Yes, we have a motion and a second. We'll continue conversation. Council Member Bertrand. Yeah, um, this is, uh, Mayor, this is a question for Steve. So there was some discussion, Steve, when you did your presentation about um, we were able to truncate our um, normal uh, monitoring and such 
Um, I just want to understand a little bit more about that. And if we continue next year with the same plan, which might be monitoring less than we normally do, would that be a problem? So um, I'll start with answering the second part first, is that the changes we're making to the monitoring plan this for this summer, I think are a one-year shot at it. Um, we, the permit conditions are to do more monitoring than we're proposing to do this year. But like I mentioned, the agencies seem to be willing to work with us. So when we go to do it next summer, I anticipate we'll be back at our full monitoring level. Um, regarding the uh, any impacts of reducing the monitoring, um, I will trust our fisheries biologist to help us through that. Um, he's produced, you know, some of the savings we have are reductions he's uh, taken on his own and reduced his fee for some of the work. Some of it is we reduced some monitoring that he did not feel that, that we could do safely at this time. So I don't think we're putting anything at risk. Um, and if we do run into problems, I think our fisheries biologists will let us know and we will work through those together. Thank you, Steve. All right, uh, any additional comments? It looks like our mayor has frozen on us. Mayor Peterson, are you still there? Mayor Peterson, if you're still there, maybe it's a suggestion you could turn off your camera, which might help with your um, internet bandwidth. And from, oh, uh, Council, uh, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry about that. Uh-oh. Did you hear the suggestion to try turning off your camera and only running the, the sound? I broke for a second there. Uh, can you hear me? Any better? Yes. All right, Vice Mayor Brooks, you had a comment? Yeah, I. so I was just trying to process council member stories um, um, motion so am I hearing that you want to use the contingency reserves rather than using the sidewalk um, dollars for is, is that what I'm hearing and I guess in my follow-up questions for Steve I mean it's all you had mentioned that you're not worried about not having enough money so this wouldn't be taking away from the sidewalk project is that correct Steve you're, you're muted, Steve. Yes, I believe the fund balance of $64,000 in the Park Avenue budget is will, will be available. Okay, yeah, I mean, because of the financial uh, issues we're, we're facing, I don't feel comfortable moving forward with dipping into our, our reserves at this time. It seems that there's money available in the CIP project um, project funds and that we should utilize that because that's what we have now. I don't see any benefit in dipping into the reserve. So I don't know if council member story wanted to speak to the, the thought behind that. Mayor Peter, oh, there she is. Sorry, I, I, it cut out for a second there. Did I understand you were requesting a council member story to um, clarify his motion? Yes, I'm just curious what his thoughts are on between using the reserve dollars versus the CIP dollars at this time. Got it. Council member story, would you be willing to address that? Yes, Mayor, I'd be happy to do that. Um, and, and, you know, and I'm not invested in which, uh, pool of additional funds we may use. Um, however, I focus on the contingency reserve because we're currently overfunded uh, by in that uh, uh, reserve fund uh, because uh, we made our 15% of total expenditures in 2021. Um, therefore, the contingency reserve is currently overfunded by $144,000. Uh, to me, that is uh, the easiest place to um, you know, uh, used uh, to get the funds uh, for this particular project. I didn't, um, the Park Avenue project, Steve mentioned it wasn't quite complete yet. We don't have the final 
numbers in yet. Um, and um, and also, I mean, usually for capital improvement projects, uh, it, and it's just my personal preference to keep them, you know, within that for that intended purpose, uh, because who knows what other improvement projects may uh, come before us uh, um, in the um, next fiscal year. Or, um, so um, those are the reasons why I focused on that. I'm not vested in uh, either source of money. Uh, both of them are available, um, but I hope that explains, you know, why I selected the contingency fund. Thank you, Council Member Story. Um, so then I would offer a friendly amendment to not utilize the, the reserve dollars at this time and to move forward with the motion. Um, so with the amendment that we use the dollars from the CIP project. Um, yeah, I'll accept that. And those are, that's just enough to get us through until May and then we'd have to consider where the rest of the funds come from or that, that covers everything. So I can get a reminder on that. I believe the motion that was made by Council Member Story was to fund the work for this year and for next spring. So it would be the $43,000 if I understood correctly. Okay. Um, and Council Member Bertrand uh, seconded that motion. So do you have any uh, comments on the I amendment? Uh, yeah, um, I have no problem with the uh, Vice Mayor's uh, amendment. Um, do we have to specify which CIP project we're thinking the money's going to come from. Uh, we're talking about Park Avenue, but in the motion, should we specify? Uh, probably wouldn't hurt. As I understood the discussion, it was Park Avenue. That's where it would come from. Oh, okay. Thank you. Just want to make sure. Okay, Councilmember Botswarp has his hand up for comments, also. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I'm turning off my uh, picture because it was draining my bandwidth. Hopefully, I come in clearer this time. Uh, I, I, I'm glad the direction was going. I'm totally against uh, invoking the contingency money. That's a very slippery slope because if you got our budget forecast has dropped, doesn't mean we're not going to need that money there. So I don't want to spend the illusion like that. It's money that's legally available to be spent, but it's not money that that we should be spending at this point. Uh, I believe Steve's very confident about the access from um, in the park. Uh, that's a 54,000 outlet, both shops as far as 40 million as, as, as the funding source. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Bosworth. Um, are there additional, any additional comments from council members? Seeing none. Uh, Madam City Clerk, we have a roll call vote, please. We have a motion and a second. Yes. Um, council Member Bertrand. Aye. Council Member Botorf. Aye. Council Member Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. Mayor Peterson. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you all for your time tonight. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Our meeting is adjourned. Goodbye.